Okay, and continuing, I think I'm about almost ready to finish with my black line art, which was my goal for today. Now I'm just doing the things that are asymmetrical. So the top and the bottom, I've already done the bottom. Let's do the top here. I'm doing it on a separate layer. Just giving them a little calic. Cowlick. And then I can even it out. And I still have that smoothing turned on. That definitely helps. But it still takes some practice. Get that kind of clean line quality. And now, with a smaller brush, I'm going to do this little top swoosh, which tells them where to start the maze. Ah. Okay, and now, so I've got it, but it's all symmetrical on the inside. Now I've got to look at what's not symmetrical. So I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to save it. And these things that are asymmetrical, things like the opening, I just have to think through all this stuff, which is tricky. Ah. So with my white, I want to paint in this gap, which shows the opening to the maze. And I think that's enough. Turn it back to 100%. There we go, we've got the opening. And then what other things do I need? I need this star. And I'll show you a nice little trick with this. Oh, I liked every part of the star except that last part. So annoying. Actually, haha. This is why you do things on new layers. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso. I'm going to find the midpoint. Why aren't you working for me? I think I have to straighten it out to use this. Okay, I'm going to. Ah. What's going on? There we go. I want to find a midpoint here. Kind of split it. Save it. Duplicate it, duplicate it. Flip. With Control T, flip horizontal. I don't think this is going to work as well as I want it to. But I'm going to make my star. Just like I did the whole thing. Oh. Then I'm going to rotate. Then I'll take this one and I'll rotate it. Control T. All these compositing skills, they help all this problem solving that we have to do over and over again in digital art at different times, just depending on what we're trying to create. 
Okay, now, so I've got that star in two different layers. I'm going to combine those layers, Command E, or I can do Layer Merge. Then I can use my brush, and I can paint them together. And I realize I'm being a little perfectionist here. I don't want to be. It's hard to avoid. When you see things you can correct and you just want to correct them. So we have the tools. But I can live with a slight lopsided one on that side. And on this side, let's finish it off. So, I'm going to clean it up. And this is just what you guys are doing with yours. I guess something about this scale that sensitivity is tough. Okay, so got that. Got my other asymmetrical stuff. Merge all that together. Well, maybe not yet. I'm going to show you how I can put that star on this line art using what we know from compositing. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put a stroke around it. I'm going to make that stroke white. Give it some space. And I'm going to make it on the outside and make it bigger. And I decide how much I want it to overlap. Interesting. So basically it can kind of cut it out for me from the one underneath. And then with all these layers, that will be where we pick it up next time. And we'll learn how to color behind it. And we're going to even turn it into a vector and make it really clean. So that's kind of what we're after. I can also, I think this is maybe the easier way. I don't know what's quite going on with this star. There we go, that's the one. I can just fill it in with white with the paint bucket. And then that will be it. So let's see, paint bucket. Yeah. Fill in the inside. And then I just need to delete the white that I used at the edge. Oh, it's because I have a feather on. That's why it's giving me issues. Turn the feather to zero. There we go. And then let me select all that black without any feather. That's why it's not solid black. And fill that now with solid black. There we go. And now I can put a stroke on it that's white that will help offset it from its surroundings. And I can choose how thick that is.
may be that thick. And then I can actually control T and scale it to do what I want, which is I think that. And then I can use my brush with white, not, not too big, and clean up some of the things around it that I don't want. And close up certain shapes. Yeah. So that's going to be more or less my finished line art. So what do I do? I turn on my background white to 100%. I save it as a PSD. I see it on my screen here, now fully filled in. That's my working file. And then to put it up to Canvas, I save it as a JPEG. So export as JPEG. Just clean black and white. Now the last thing is I can turn it into a vector. And I'm going to show this in this video, but it's optional because it doesn't use freeware. But this is one of the advantages, here's my JPEG, of having Adobe Illustrator. We can turn raster files into vector files. There's a site called Vector Magic that also offers a program, just a download where you can convert JPEGs or PNGs to SVG or EPS files. You know, it will trace it for you. So I'm just going to demo it here, but I'm, you have to pay for it in order to actually download these things. But this is vectorizing, or what Illustrator calls image tracing. And it will take however clean your, your digital inking was, We'll check back on it. It will turn it into a vector. So the way we do that with Adobe Illustrator is we open up your, our file with Adobe Illustrator. There it is. We click on it with our large selection tool. We go to image trace options, which you can also find under layer windows. And there's just nothing like this in vector.com or freeware. Click on black and white logo. And it's going to very quickly trace it into a vector. And because we digitally inked it, it's going to be really clean, which is quite nice. And then we can play with these settings, and then we ignore the white, so it's just black line art, like that. And then we can save that as an SVG, save onto our computer, as an SVG, which we can then open up as a vector in vector.com and clean it up as a vector further if we want. So this is all extra, but it can help us clean up our line art even more. So if I go to vector.com now and I use it online and I open that SVG, which is right here that I just saved, Upload an image. That's weird. I guess it's wanting me to log in. So let me go. New artwork or open file. And I'll go to my desktop and I'll open that SVG. There it is. SVGs can, I don't know why it's missing things at the edges because of the artboard, but this is a vector that now I can play with. That's annoying. <laughs> so we need to save it in slightly different ways within Illustrator, which is why in Illustrator, this is the file I recommend you save it as. In order to get it to fit in the SVG, we have to drag.